One of the big pieces of news that you'll find in the in the mainstream press, particularly in the in the print press right now, is that Facebook is about to do an initial public offering. Now, an IPO, an initial public offering, this is when a company goes from being privately owned to selling stock to the public. And it is the only time when if you buy the stock, the money ends up with the company. If you were to go out right now and buy General Electric stock or Marriott stock or Exxon Mobil stock or whatever, you're not helping the, the company a penny. Not a penny of that is going to the company. It's going to the previous stockholder. But if you buy stock during an IPO, that money actually goes to the company. And so what's going to come out of that IPO, that, that, that Facebook IPO, is that probably about a thousand millionaires are going to be created because there are people who own a lot of stock in the company that are going to sell it to the public and and you know take the money and run as it were plus the the corporation gets a fair amount of cash but there's a there's a larger issue here and and I find it fascinating that you know there's all this reporting on how there's going to be a thousand new millionaires in America as a result of Facebook and the fact of the matter is that if you're cold naked and hungry an IPO isn't going to help you, and neither are the super PACs. I mean, here's the simple reality. If you're cold, naked, and hungry, you're unhappy, right? And, you know, we can agree on that. There's a, there's a, it's a very simple, straightforward. You're unhappy. And if somebody gives you some clothing to wear and brings you inside and sets you in front of a fire and, and, and gives you a big bowl of, of uh, soup or goulash or something, you go from unhappy to happy, relatively speaking. So it is true that stuff can affect the quality of your life, can make you feel happier at the bottom level. But the reality of that has been used by marketers and things to cause people to believe... That, or to lead to the belief that, therefore, more will make you even happier. So, you know, if this amount of stuff, you know, if, if, you know, clothing, warmth, and food makes you go from zero to ten in happiness, that, and say that represents, you know, a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff, then, then a couple hundred dollars more worth of stuff, you know, hey, a, a flat screen TV, that'll take you from ten to twenty in happiness, and a couple hundred dollars more, you know, and a thousand dollars, a couple of ten thousand dollars worth of stuff, a new car that'll take you from from a hundred to two hundred, and so on. And and this belief that the more stuff you get, the happier you will you will become, has become for pervasive in our culture. And I think this, you know, all this hoop to dupe around, hey, we're gonna have a thousand new millionaires when Facebook does their IPO, is a reflection of that. But why is it that Americans seem to be obsessed on this? Hey, new millionaires are being created when Europeans don't don't care. And there's a pretty straightforward answer to that. And that is that in order to have real security, remember that base stuff, that core stuff that we were talking about that, that, that takes you to the first level of happiness? In order to have real security, you actually must have a strong social safety net. And that includes knowing that if you get sick, you're going to be taken care of no matter what. Health care for all, universal health care for all. You knowing that you have a real retirement waiting for you when you reach that age, or if you're injured, or if you or if you have some kind of disability, or if your child is born with a disability, that you have real coverage that you can actually live throughout your life. And that if you lose your job and you're unemployed for a period of time, not not because you know you've decided to be a lazy bum, but because the, the economy's gone to hell in a handbasket, that if you're unemployed, you're not going to lose your home, you're not going to, you know, your family's not going to disintegrate, your marriage isn't going to break up, things are going to, that there is a real social safety net. Not just for the very poor, as Mitt Romney puts it, but for everybody. And the European middle class has that social safety net. And it's growing in country, in country in other countries around the world. I mean, you know, almost a year ago or six, maybe nine months ago, China announced that they're they're rolling out a national single payer health care system for their entire nation. India's talking about it now. The developing countries are working on it. Other countries, so they have it. We don't. We don't have that kind of security. The middle class in America is profoundly insecure. Forty-seven percent of Americans 
are one loss of job or one serious illness away from falling into the depths of below the poverty level in the United States. And so this causes Americans to obsess on getting rich so that they can provide for their own security. I mean, how can you know that if you get sick, it's not going to wipe you out? Well, if you've got five million bucks in the bank, you know that. That'll cover most things. I mean, that'll even cover a transplant, right? Or how can you know that if you lose your job for a protracted period, well, if you got millions of dollars in the bank, I mean, even a couple hundred thousand bucks isn't security in the United States. Ten, twenty thousand dollars in an IRA, that's not security in the United States. One illness, six months of being without a job, it's gone. So being a multi-millionaire, not just a millionaire, even a million dollars probably isn't enough if somebody, you know, I mean, cancer can be a million dollar treatment. So even one million dollars in the United States is not enough to be, to feel secure, to feel safe, to say to yourself, you know, I think I'm going to step out and start a business. I'm going to, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to take some risks. I'm going to help, you know, participate in this economy rather than just, oh, I, I have to work at this company because I have to pay off my student loan and I'm terribly afraid that if I lose my health, blah, blah, you know, it's, this is terribly dysfunctional. Communities should provide security to their people, not just goods and services and wealth. And frankly, the biggest community that we have, we call the United States of America. We should be organizing our economy to provide real security for all, not have a situation like we have in the United States right now where you're only really secure if you've got a few million dollars in the bank. But instead, what are we getting? We're getting right to work for less laws in Indiana. Arizona is declaring war on working people. Wisconsin and Michigan are going to have an ongoing war against the middle class. Florida has a war on poor people with drug testing. I mean, it's time to wake up to the very real human values that are part of a successful experience of what our founders envisioned when they talked about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You cannot have any of those three if you don't have a basic safety net under you. And I'm not talking about the very poor that Mitt Romney was talking about exclusively. Obviously, they need that safety net also, but so does the middle class America. Everybody does. And Romney's, you know, the Republican rule is, ah, you know, let them all become entrepreneurs.